Dividend discount models are often used as a first approximation for the valuation of a stock. So I'm going to walk you through how to do these today. Pretty simple stuff. The valuation of stock prices are based on expected dividends and the discount rate or the cost of equity in dividend discount models. So let's check this out a little bit more. The advantage uh, of DDMs, well, First of all, they're fairly quick and easy to calculate. They're a lot easier than doing you know, a full discounted cash flow analysis, which comes in later finance courses and is a lot more complicated. They're often used for um, financials and REITs, uh, utilities, stocks that pay high dividends. Of course, that makes a lot of mistake, uh, makes a lot of sense. Now, what's the disadvantage of dividend discount models? Well, not all companies pay dividends. They, in fact, a lot of very successful companies still don't pay dividends. They plow their cash back into their firm. They don't want to distribute it to shareholders. And so DDMs won't work for them. Dividends also can be very unpredictable for a firm. Sometimes they can stop their dividend, and so it makes it complicated. And often... Um, you know, even the third point here, dividend payouts are a policy decision and they can be divorced from the reality of the economics of a firm. In other words, a firm can do, be doing very well and pay no dividends and a firm can be doing very poorly and pay lots of dividends still. You do see that sometimes a company will increase its dividend even if it's had a bad year. So, you know, there are some definite disadvantages of DDMs, but the advantages are they tend to be quick and easy. So let's check it out. So there's three major types of DDMs. There's a constant growth dividend discount model with an infinite horizon. I'll walk you through that in a second. And then there's one that where you have constant dividends. So there's no growth in the dividends. And that is also with an infinite horizon. And then third, there is a two-stage dividend discount model. So you have like this short horizon period and it's followed by an infinite horizon period, often with constant growth. Now, all DDMs kind of are based on one of these three. There's different variations, but really you can even boil it down to two types, a single stage DDM. Those first two are single stage DDMs and a, and a second one, which is a two part DDM. Okay. So let's do constant growth dividend discount model with an infinite horizon. This is also known as the Gordon growth model. If you see it on a test, you're excited because it's pretty easy to get through this. It starts off complicated. You're like, holy cow, look at this equation. This looks really complicated. This is when you have a constant level of growth. So you have, you can see G in the numerator up here. The dividends are constantly growing by, you know, one plus G and to an exponent. So they grow every year by this growth rate. Um, and you discount them by this R. Now, the problem is, you know, a firm is an ongoing concern, so we assume that they last to infinity. And, of course, we can't predict dividends out to an infinite horizon. So we need a shortcut. So the beauty is um, we've got this Gordon growth model that greatly simplifies it. If we've got the growth of dividends and we've got the cost of equity, we get this very simple equation. The price of the stock, so this up here reduces down here algebraically to next year's dividend divided by R minus G, the cost of capital minus the growth rate. Now, one thing that's very important is the dividend that we're going to use has to equal next year's dividend. It cannot be last year's dividend. Okay, and that is a common mistake that students make on tests. You've got to make sure you get next year's dividend. If you get that, you're golden, okay? Don't make that mistake. Let me give you an example of a test question where this would apply. All right, Homestake Mining Company just paid its shareholders an annual dividend of $2.50. You estimate that this dividend will grow at 3% forever. There's your G, 3% forever. If you expect, require to earn a return of 10% on the stock, there's your discount rate, 10%. How much are you willing to pay for it? Well, here's the question now. Here's the here's the equation. That's what we're going to use. But the question is, what is div one? What is next year's dividend? Is it 250? That's what it says up here. But it's not 250. That's what they just paid their shareholders. I have so many students that will put 250 in that numerator. Let's not do that anymore. It's 250 is last year's dividend. I need next year's dividend. Next year's dividend is going to be what we just paid times 1.03 times 1 plus that growth rate. 1.03. It's two dollars fifty-seven and a half cents. Okay, 2.575. So that's our numerator and then we're going to put R minus G in the denominator. 0.1 minus 0.03. Okay, because that's our discount rate and that is our growth rate, R minus G, and you get 36.79. Another thing you need to note is that 
r has to be greater than g. If it's not, this equation doesn't work. Okay. Now, let's do a different one, constant dividend model with an infinite horizon. Now, this is really just a special case of the Gordon growth model. It's a special case where g is actually equal to 0. The dividends aren't going to grow. They're going to stay the same forever. Dividend 1 equals dividend 0 equals dividend 2. It doesn't change. All right. We can actually use this equation here that we just used and just set g, is g equal to 0. That's really all we're doing. Okay, so it's really the same problem with just growth equals zero. Now, um, so here's the question. Chatfield Corp. paid its preferred shareholders an annual dividend of $3. Uh, and they have stated that this dividend will stay at this level forever. It's never going to change. It's always going to be $3. The cost of equity on the preferred stock is 8%. Okay, what is your estimate of the price of this preferred share? So it's going to be $3 divided by 8%. That's it. You get this question on a test, you are excited because that is a layup. That's a bunny. That's an easy question. You're going to crush it. Okay, $37.50. All right, another name for this is a perpetuity. Okay, perpetual. It's always going to pay $3 forever. Not a lot of these perpetuities that exist out there, but there are some that exist. And uh, so pretty interesting types of contracts. Now we get to the more complicated one, and we're just going to break it down. Two-stage dividend discount models, a short horizon and then an infinite horizon. Okay, so for this, there's really four steps. You want to do these. You want to discount each cash flow over the finite horizon period. You want to calculate a terminal value using this constant growth, the Gordon growth model. Okay, so we've already figured out how to do that. But we got to calculate then the present value of that terminal value. That's a little... That's an extra little step that makes it a little tricky. And then we're going to sum that terminal value plus the present value of the finite horizon cash flows. Sounds like a lot of words. It's a lot easier when you see a problem. Let's check it out. Example test question. Platte River Distributors is expected to pay a dividend of a dollar at the end of this year. Okay. You expect that the dividend will grow 20% per year for the next two years. So 20%, then another 20%. So they're going to pay this dividend at the end of the year. We're going to use that as DV1. Okay, that's that's kind of the upcoming year. That's a payment that's going to happen. So that is kind of a next year's dividend situation. It's going to grow 20%, then 20%, then drop to 15% growth. So still positive growth for one year. And then it's going to settle at this 8% indefinite number. So that's our G at the end. That's our constant growth at the end. You're going to require a 12% return to invest in this stock with this risk profile. That's your discount rate. That's your cost of equity capital. How much would you be justified in paying for this stock? Okay, so let's just summarize some of the parameters that we're going to use here. Dividend 1, growth rate, growth rate, growth rate, then 8%, then 12% discount rate, okay? And so the first thing you need to do is map out those horizon cash flows. So the first year, you're going to get a dollar. The next year, you're going to get a buck 20 because that's a dollar times 1.2%. Then the next year, you're going to get 1.44. That's $1.20 times another growth rate of 20%, so 1.2%. Gives us a buck 44. And then the last one is going to be this $1.44 times uh, 15%, and so 1.15%. So that gives us a buck 656. Okay, we're not going to bring in this 8% just yet. I'll, I'll walk you through that in a second. But those, this is our what we call our horizon cash flows. Okay, now. Let's, let's re report those here. So let's put them up there just so we have it on our screen. And so over the horizon, we get a dollar a year from now or kind of at the end of the year. We're going to discount that by 1.12. That's our cost of equity capital. Then we're going to get a buck 20. We're going to discount that at 12% squared. So 1.12 squared, a buck 44, 1.12 to the third power. And then finally, 1.656 is 1.12 to the fourth power because these are all in successive years. So we sum all that up, and you get three dollars and ninety point nine two seven cents. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure you can reproduce this math. You may understand this conceptually, but when it's go time on a test, you got to make sure that you do your calculations correctly on your financial calculator. So you need to practice these in advance and make sure you get the right answer. You can make mistakes. You can get all the right math, and you can do the wrong mistake on your financial calculator. You get the problem wrong. Okay, the terminal value now at the end of year four, you're going to sell this stock. So the very moment you get this buck six five six, 
you want to know what the terminal value is or what you could sell it for at that point. And that is just the Gordon growth model. That's next year's dividend. So at the end of year four, it's next year's dividend, which is 1.656 times 1.08. Remember, this is the 8% constant growth forever, indefinitely at this point. So if I multiply these two together, it's about $1.79 divided by R minus G. So it's $44.71. Now, here's the thing. I I get a dollar, I get a buck twenty, I get a buck forty four, the fourth year I get a buck six five six, and if I want to, I can sell the stock at that point for forty four dollars and seventy one cents. Four years from today I could sell it. Okay. Now the problem is is that is four years from today. So so I need to make that a present value. What's the present value of forty four dollars and seventy one cents? What's that worth to me today? And that is again going to be uh, and that's what I'm asking here, this question. Now, that is again going to be this number here, 44712, divided by 1.12 to the fourth power. So the very moment I get this buck 656, my stock's going to be worth at that time 44712. So these occur at the same moment. Okay, That's why I'm using this 1.12 to the fourth power. I'm not doing 1.12 to the fifth power. These two line up. That's the key. This is $28.415. So what I'm now going to do is add this amount, the present value of my terminal value, to the present value of my horizon cash flows. The sum of those two is my stock price. That's the price I'm willing to pay for today. I'm willing to pay $32.34. This is a more complicated problem. Uh, sometimes your professors will give you a few extra points on a problem like this. It's a more challenging problem. So you got to practice it. Sometimes these horizon cash flows are the same number. And that is what we call an annuity. If it's always, say, $1.20 every year for four years, that's an annuity. And so you could do the present value of an annuity plus the terminal value, present value of the terminal value. I'm not going to go through the annuity calculation here. You could still do the same math as I did before, just with constant numbers. That still works. You could do a shortcut, present value of an annuity, if you want, on a financial calculator. I don't have that in this video, but I do have that on a prior video uh, that focuses on uh, how to use a financial calculator. So with that in mind, I'd like to ask you to please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to this channel. And then you have full access to all the videos, all the content here for free. This is where I make finance fun for students. So thank you and look forward to seeing you again.